Welcome to Kita News, I'm your host Prasad. Just a few days after DAP leader Tony Pua conceded that there were stupid ministers in the previous Pakatan Harapan government, the opposition has been dealt with another blow, this time from Muda chief Syed Sadiq. He said Harapan may be talking about change, but they're no longer the change makers. I hope they're listening because GE15 isn't too far away. Mua MP Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman said the opposition is its own enemy as it's unwilling to adapt and change. The former minister said, on the other hand, AMNO has been practicing more change even by fielding more young candidates in recent elections. They were unwilling to change. We feel a sense of comfort despite losing one election to another, yet AMNO is changing more than us. I mean, I don't think people realize this. In Malacca, AMNO fielded more young politicians. In Johor, they did it. They're willing to change leaders more than us. Look at how often they change their state leaders. The Muda leader said this during a forum organised by Malaysiana, LCMS and Lideronomics.com last night. Said Sadiq added that the opposition has been talking about change for a long time, but are no longer the change makers. In contrast, he said Muda is willing to take big risks. Earlier this week, a photograph surfaced on social media, which led to some of you speculating that Najib has a new family. Malaysians, why is it your concern? I really don't know, unless you're Rosma Manso. That was the response of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak when he was asked to comment over the issue of an alleged wedding photo of him with a woman that went viral two days ago. The BN Advisory Board chairperson declined to comment when approached by reporters as he was leaving the Kuala Lumpur Courts Complex today. Najib was present in court together with 1MDB's former CEO Arul Kanda Kandasamy for the World Fund's audit tampering trial. Yesterday, Bersatu Youth Chief Wan Ahmad Faisal, Wan Ahmad Kamal congratulated Najib's wedding in a comment on one of Najib's Facebook posts. Zayed Hamidi is no stranger to court. He's facing several corruption charges, so he's in court quite often. And now he's also ready to face Dr. Mahathir in court. AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said he would answer in court on the allegations made by former Premier Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. He said this when asked about Mahathir's claims that Zahid came to see him five times to discuss the former's criminal cases. Zahid is suing Mahathir over his statement in a press conference earlier this year, where he claimed that Zahid had met him to try and get on his good side as the latter anticipated being jailed for corruption. On May 17, Mahathir replied to Zahid's suit in a court document where he provided more details of the alleged meetings, including dates and his daily schedules to prove the claims. He said Zahid had expressed concern over his court cases during the meetings. Meanwhile, Zahid also responded to Mahathir's threat to sue him over his remark in 2017, where he had said that Mahathir is not a Malay. He said he would leave it to Mahathir if he wanted to sue. Arul Kanda had the difficult task of working in 1MDB. Now he may have an even more difficult task to testify against Najib. The prosecution in the 1MDB audit report case has applied to call former 1MDB CEO Arul Kanda Kandasamy as a witness to testify against his co-accused in the trial, former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak. Deputy Public Prosecutor Gopal Siri Ram made the application at the Kuala Lumpur High Court today during the case involving the Malaysian Sovereign Wealth Fund. During the proceedings, Siri Ram said Aro Kanda possesses material information that could affect the outcome of the case against Najib. He said Arul has information relevant to the charge against the other accused. Najib in relation to a particular meeting held in February 2016 and events that followed the meeting. When trial judge Mohamed Zaini Maslan asked Arul Kanda's lead defence counsel and Sivan Tan whether they had any objections against the application, the lawyer said they would leave it to the court. However, Najib's lead defence counsel, Mohamed Shafi Abdullah, indicated they would object to the application. The lawyer contended that the application raises problems involving the federal constitution. Zaini then directed the prosecution to file their written submissions by Monday next week and for Najib's legal team to file theirs by Friday next week. 
He also set May 30 to hear party submissions on the merits of calling Arokanda to testify against Najib. Does Tajuddin have what it takes to be our ambassador to Indonesia? Short answer from someone who has been in the position, not quite. A former diplomat has shared his opinion on the appointment of Pasir Salak MP Tajuddin Abdul Rahman as Malaysia's ambassador to Indonesia. Speaking to Malaysia Kini on condition of anonymity, the retired ambassador said that based on his personality, Tajuddin is not suitable to fill such an important position. The former ambassador added that it was not a good move by the government as such an important position should be filled by someone with experience and training. The envoy also said that a political appointee like Tajuddin is usually given such posts, not because of their merit but as a reward. And this approach is not good because the position of an ambassador is not one of a toothless tiger, but comes with daunting tasks that require training and vast experience. Malaysia Kini had contacted the Korea diplomat who had served as Malaysia's ambassador to several countries to seek comments on the government's decision to appoint Tajuddin as Malaysia's diplomatic representative in Jakarta. The move has been criticised with many people questioning Putrajaya's choice and calling for the Prime Minister to explain the decision. Previously, Tajuddin had confirmed to Malaysia Kini of his appointment but did not respond to requests for his comments on the criticisms. However, not all are against his appointment. A Deputy Minister said Tajuddin fits the position because he is the chairperson of the BN Backbenchers Club. A deputy minister has come out in defence of Pasir Salak MP Tajuddin Abdul Rahman's appointment as ambassador to Indonesia. Deputy Communications and Multimedia Minister Zahidi Zaino Abidin said it was appropriate for Tajuddin to be given a government position. He said this is because Tajuddin is the chairperson of the BN Backbenchers Club or BNBBC in Parliament. Zahidi told Malaysia Kini that for Tajuddin to carry out his duties as BNBBC chairperson, he needs a position as there is the matter of allocations and such. He said it was not fair if a regular BNBBC member were to hold positions in GLCs while its chairperson had no position. Zahidi added that Tajuddin's appointment was done by Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakub and had been agreed by Indonesian President Joko Widodo. He said perhaps those who don't want Tajuddin as ambassador would prefer if he was appointed as deputy prime minister or even a minister. According to him, criticism or praise was normal and expected for any appointment and that people could agree or disagree with it. Lecturer Kamarul Zaman, who has been a fierce critic of DAP, is the prime minister's special officer. You're probably only hearing this now, but he has had the job since December last year. Lecturer Kamarul Zaman Yusof has confirmed his appointment as Special Officer to Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakub. This came following social media posts by the Prime Minister's office attributing him as such while promoting a symposium on making Bahasa Malaysia international yesterday. Kamarul Zaman had earlier tried to cover it up after queries were made regarding the appointment. When questioned by Malaysia Kini last night, he confirmed the appointment and said he has been serving in the role since December last year but wanted to keep a low profile. He said he did not want to publicise it as he preferred to work in obscurity. He added that he did not chase publicity and prefers to keep a low profile while working behind the scenes. Kamaru Zaman said he was seconded to the PMO from University Utara, Malaysia, where he served as a senior lecturer and his job did not involve politics or policy matters. However, he said he was entrusted to be the director of the Bahasa Malaysia Symposium, which required him to be more extroverted to promote the event. Kamaru Zaman is perhaps most infamous for being a DAP critic, with whom he had multiple legal tussles. Commenting on this, he said it was a personal matter which was unrelated to his current duties. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad, thank you for watching.